Hey guys, in this video, we're going to go over what we feed and why we feed it. So if you've seen our introductory video that outlines the basic structure of our farm, you know that we raise cattle in all stages of growth. And as such, each life stage requires their own specific feed rations in order to optimize their growth targets. This is done most effectively by providing a combination of several different feed ingredients to each growth stage. In case you're new to the agricultural industry, I'll go through them briefly. First, there's the roughages. We'll start with hay. Hay is one of the most common feeds you'll find on the average farm around North America. It can be fed in large bales or ground down and used as an ingredient in a mixed ration. The two key factors in good quality hay are moisture content and time of cut. Hay is preserved the same way as dry or dehydrated foods are. The lack of moisture prevents microbial growth and decay. So ideal hay has been cut and cured in the field and exposed to little or no rain and packed tightly into a bale below 16 to 18 percent moisture content. Grass hay can be baled as dry as you really want but care must be taken with hay that contains fragile heads or fine leaves like alfalfa to ensure that you don't thrash out the most nutrient dense components of your hay. This is why during hay season you might see several balers racing around in the same field. The conditions are right and they cannot afford to stop. The timeliness of cutting is the other factor. Cutting hay early, like what is most commonly done in the dairy industry, means a less mature plant that has more digestible protein and less total digestible energy per acre. Cutting hay later and when it's more mature means that less digestible protein is available, but you get more hay and more total energy, which is more suitable to beef cows and specific feedlot rations. So consider your growth stage and feeding needs when deciding when to cut hay. The other type of bales we'll often use are straw bales. Straw is the stalk of a grain plant that is generally discarded by a combine after harvest. If it's not chopped and spread on the field by the combine, it can be baled and used as bedding or feed. As bedding, it has great insulation value and is necessary in our cold climate. It can also be an excellent filler in a diet containing other high quality ingredients. Non-lactating or dry cows, for example, don't have large nutrient requirements as they aren't growing or milking, so supplementing their diet with straw is a great way to ensure that they aren't going hungry while also not gaining body condition that would be a burden on calving ease. We find that a great ration for our cows right before calving contains a mixture of chopped straw and corn silage. Silage is a feed that is made up of a whole plant chopped into small pieces and stored anaerobically. Unlike hay, which is stored at very low moisture, silage is stored quite wet at 55 to 65 percent moisture and relies on the absence of oxygen to allow the fermentation process to preserve the feed. In order to accomplish this, we first chop the crop with a forage harvester, truck it immediately to the yard and pile it. We then use a 9-ton tractor to repeatedly compress the silage to remove all the oxygen. Once the pile is completely and adequately packed, we seal it with a layer of plastic and weigh it down with old straw and used tires. In three weeks time, it's ready to be fed, but caution must be used to maintain a flat face on the pile as you feed it, to keep your feed fresh and avoid excess spoilage. You can make silage out of many crops, including barley, wheat, oats, peas, alfalfa, and other hays, but we like corn silage for its high energy and its high yields per acre. It costs quite a bit to grow, but its yield consistency and overall cost benefit make it an essential part of our feeding operations. So, hay, silage, and straw make up the bulk of what we would call roughages on our farm. Now, we'll move into the concentrated feeds. These have a lot higher nutrient density and are essential to ensure steady growth in order to produce the cheapest and the best quality beef possible. The major concentrated feed component that we put into our rations are grains. These include corn grain, wheat, barley, and oats. Each of these grains is a little bit different from the other in terms of nutrient profile, and this needs to be considered when formulating a targeted gain ration. In almost all situations, grain should be rolled before feeding to ensure maximum digestibility. This is especially true with wheat and corn, which have very hard seed coats that protect their starchy endosperms. Failure to properly roll these grains will mean large amounts of nutrients will be bypassed without being digested. Wheat is generally the fastest digesting grain, and oats and corn are the slowest. What type of grain you feed, therefore, needs to be managed closely to maintain acceptable feed passage rates and avoid a condition where stomach acidity gets too high, called ruminal acidosis, which will likely receive a video of its own in the future. Another concentrated component we use are various mineral combinations. Animal health, growth, reproduction, and milk production are all limited to the abundance of the lowest common nutrient. So ensuring that cattle have access to adequate macronutrients that are required in large amounts, like calcium and phosphorus, is paramount. 
Micronutrients, or trace minerals, like zinc, copper, cobalt, and a dozen or so others, also need to be present at adequate levels. Most loose minerals, like the ones we feed, are pre-mixed by a feed mill, but one needs to also consider how your water analysis and soil nutrient profile might influence what your cattle are eating and drinking. We also supplement our minerals with vitamins A, D, and E. Cattle can synthesize their own B and C vitamins, but supplementing their rations with ADE is a good idea to ensure growth and reproductive efficiency in your cattle. We feed our mineral loosely and offer it free choice to all our cattle, sometimes with a salt block during hot summer months. With our corn silage rations, it's often necessary to provide extra calcium, and we do this by adding limestone straight into our mixer wagon. The mixer wagon is an essential piece of machinery on our farm. It's used to combine feeds in a desired ratio to make a total mixed ration, or TMR. A TMR can be far more efficient for growth because it ensures that every mouthful that an animal takes is a consistent mixture of what they require. The cattle eating the ration aren't able to easily sort out their preferred components and therefore aren't going to suffer a toxicity or deficiency unless the operator makes an error. One of the biggest advantages to using a mixer wagon to make total mixed rations is the potential for feed cost savings. We use computer programs based off of formulas from the National Research Council to achieve the best rations possible, be that what we have on hand to use for feed or when we're deciding what to purchase to meet our feeding needs. And because we have so many feed ingredients to choose from, we're able to discriminate between feed sources based on availability, price, and the ability to complement the ration nutritionally. Market factors are constantly changing over time, and local, national, or global events can create opportunities to save with good management. One year, a wheat and oat blend may be a cheaper and more nutritionally adequate concentrate than barley, or it might be cheaper for us to grow corn for silage and add straw than to grind up hay for roughages. Whatever the case, computer programming and a bit of common sense can mean big savings while simultaneously providing the best nutrition possible for the animal in question. It's part of what we do to ensure that the consumer is getting the cheapest and best quality beef possible. So that's basically it. In future videos, you'll see us referring to these feed ingredients. So thank you for taking the time to watch and learn. If you learned something from this video or appreciate the content, be sure to like it so we know what type of content to produce. And if you're a farmer that knows all of this stuff already, feel free to share it with those that don't. And lastly, if you want to be up to date with all of our new content as it comes out, be sure to subscribe. Thanks so much, you guys. Have a good one.